Hey, what's up electric skateboard fans? Welcome to TED Tech. Today I have something really special for you. This is the Huger Tech Racer. Now before you say anything, this is not the same board from the FabTrav, TechCrunch, or any other review you've seen. This is the updated, revised, consumer-ready product. By the way, if you don't know, the Huger Tech Racer is an electric skateboard that was crowdfunded back in July of 2017. Huger is selling three boards. This is the Racer, it has an advertised max speed of 25 miles per hour and a range of 20 miles. For more details, check out Indiegogo or HugerTech.com, link in the description. I'm going to show you all the upgrades Huger put into this board. There's a lot to talk about, so let's get started. First, let's talk about the physical changes between this board and the first prototype demo board. Huger made the wheelbase, which is the distance between the front and the back wheels, wider by an inch and a quarter. The grip tape has been greatly improved. It's coarser, more durable, and all around looks nicer. There's more of a bezel around the edge of the board. Looks more legit. As for the components, there's now a quick disconnect to allow easier servicing to the motors. Now you'll be able to remove the rear wheels and trucks without having to remove the battery compartment. Speaking of the battery, Huger is now including a new accessory with the board. This adapter allows you to charge quick swap batteries without the need of plugging into the board itself. My favorite physical change that Huger made was moving the tail lights just a tad forward. This allows you to prop up the board on its end without scratching the lights. Good design choice. Let's move on to something a little more exciting, shall we? Let's do some acceleration tests. I'm going to put down my hood since it's going to fly off anyways. Basically, I'm going to full speed on the throttle and you're going to hear the cracks in the sidewalk as they go by. So this is normal mode. Alright, now to test GT mode. Go. Honestly, the board feels really good. In normal mode, it takes about a second before the board starts moving, and that's probably good for beginners. GT mode, on the other hand, gives you all the torque you're looking for. Trust me when I say it is powerful. If you don't lean forward or get a moving start, the board will take off without you. It's about that time. Let's talk about range. Huger says this board and battery have a 20 mile range. Well, that's the maximum distance you might be able to get. I wanted to stress test this. What is the minimum range you can rely on the battery to get you? I set out with 100% full battery, put the headlights on, and rode along a bike path with average terrain. I stayed in GT mode, powering up inclines and coasting down declines. My ride lasted 1 hour and 10 minutes. After just 5 miles, the last green light on the remote turned to red. At 6.5 miles, the board started to beep and it slowed down to about 10 to 15 miles per hour. At 8 miles, the beeping got faster, and the board slowed down much more to about a brisk walking pace. Finally, at 9.54 miles, the board came to a stop. So there you have it. I would say 8 miles is the farthest you can reliably go while riding fast. I couldn't really test the app on Android. It wasn't really staying connected too well. That's all stuff that can be changed in software, so I'm sure it'll get better. Boosted Board doesn't even have an Android app, so... A little bit about the remote. So the slider feels great. I'm not worried about it slipping or fumbling when trying to brake, and I can easily reach the switches on the back with my middle finger. Huger has made a lot of improvements to the connection between the board and the remote. Living in the suburbs, I couldn't do much signal interference testing, but the remote never disconnected on me. If there is a loss of signal, the board will beep and gradually slow down. When I turned the remote back on, it reconnected instantly. One thing that other reviewers have complained about is this board's braking. Huger has actually made some significant improvements in this area. Let me show you some of the braking tests I did. Keep in mind I was on a flat, dry surface. The results may vary if you're going down a hill or if it's slippery or you know there's some other type of road condition. I tested out normal and GT mode. I did this by going full speed, slammed on the brakes, and measured the distance between when I hit the brakes and when I came to a complete stop. Wow, right there. Literally, my wheels ended right at the 64 feet mark. This is the same test in normal mode. I'm expecting to stop a lot quicker, so I only measured out 32 feet. Okay, I stopped. Braking distance in normal mode is 23 feet. 
braking distance in GT mode is 64 feet. The brakes are definitely much better. I feel confident, so now it's just a matter of getting used to the stopping distance. Honestly, I am really impressed with this board. This board is heavy, but it also feels heavy duty and robust, and all around, I'm very happy with it. Another thing other reviewers were complaining about this board is its weight. This weighs 15.7 pounds, so almost 16. Honestly, like, what do you expect? It's an electric skateboard. You know, if you're planning on traveling with it, then deal with the extra weight. It's not, it's not that bad, I don't think. This board feels really good at high speeds. The 90 millimeter wheels will get you over all bumps and cracks. And as for the deck, it's rigid. There's no flex. And after riding a boosted board, I kind of prefer that. You can feel the road more, but it's also much more stable as you go faster. And that's my review. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe, and if you have any questions or feelings about the Huger Tech Racer, leave a comment below. Aloha!